There are a few things we're pretty sure we need as human beings. Air, water, food, some way to get on the internet, you know, basic needs. But throughout history, there have been stories that suggest that we might be able to get by without one of these for a surprisingly long time. Food. I'm going to look into some of those claims, explain why we need food in the first place and give you the lowdown on whether fasting is a good idea or not. Now, there's an obvious smart ass answer to this question, which I'll deal with first. Yes, you can live without solid food if you have a liquid diet. Some people suffer rare conditions where they can't eat any solids, like achalasia, a condition where the muscles in the throat lose the ability to relax and allow food down through it. Treatment can involve stretching the muscles or Botox to relax them or surgery. But one woman in India who was unable to get treatment lived without solid food for all of her 25 years, drinking milk, tea and other liquids for nourishment. So a liquid diet could pretty much provide all the nutrition you need. Okay, so what about living on no intake of food calories at all? Well, humans need food to fuel our cells. The average 70 kilogram man burns 1,680 kilocalories a day, even if he's just lying on a sofa. Now we break down almost all the food we eat into glucose and then react those glucose molecules with oxygen inside the mini power plants that we contain in most of our cells, the mitochondria, to release energy. Now, there's no way around it. Everything our body does requires energy. A few years back, a woman claimed that she could live off just water and sunlight, but she gave up her attempt after 45 days. And other people who have bought into those beliefs who didn't stop have died. So I shouldn't need to say this. We are not plants. The clue is that we don't have green in our skin. You know, we have no chloroplasts, so we can't make glucose from carbon dioxide and sunlight. If you don't eat, you'd need to get that energy from somewhere else, such as your own stores. Now, it's estimated that that same 70 kilogram man will have a store of 8,000 kilojoules of energy in his glycogen stores and around 400,000 kilojoules in his body fat, which equates to around about 97,000 kilocalories. People can live for months on their own stores. If you can get water too, most people seem to be able to survive for 30 to 40 days on nothing else. But body weight and composition can make a huge difference in how long you live without food. If you're very fat and watched by doctors, there's a chance you could live much, much longer without additional calories. One large Scottish man is probably the most famous case of a scientifically studied fast. In 1965, this 27-year-old turned up at a hospital weighing 207 kilograms and he announced he was giving up food, and that he wanted them to monitor him along the way. When he refused to listen to advice against his plan, the staff agreed, and he lasted an astonishing 382 days, and by the end was only having bowel movements about once per month. Gross. Although he did drop to 82 kilograms, and even better, he kept the weight off for five years. He did need some help though. He was given a multivitamin every day, an extra potassium and sodium when those levels started to drop. He was also given yeast, a good source of B vitamins and chromium, which helps stabilize blood glucose levels. The experience shows us that it's not just energy we get from food. Humans also need their vital amines, vitamins, as well as a few other things that are needed for normal health, but they can't be synthesized by the body. Up near the top of the list, is salt. If you can't get any salt, you can enter a state called hyponatremia, where your blood pressure drops dramatically, your cells fill with water, and your blood becomes dark and sticky. One study found that people became too sick and tired to do anything after only 10 days on a completely sodium and salt-free diet. I should say though that they started from a state where they tried to sweat all the salt out of them. Above and beyond the calories we need are the other things we rely on like nutrients. Hunger and nutrition don't necessarily have to be linked. You can be completely full and still be malnourished. In fact, many obese people are found to be missing out on vitamins and minerals, and more obscure dangers include rabbit starvation, a rare form of extreme malnutrition thought to be caused by the extreme absence of fat, something sometimes seen in wilderness explorers and other people living on wild game. Still, there is some evidence that an occasional short fast can be good for you, something like five days spread out over a month can reduce your risk of heart disease. 
People have also found good results with the intermittent fasting program, five days eating, two days fasting. Now, we also know that some animals live longer when calories are cut by 40%, but no one's proved this on humans just yet. The thing is, we also don't really know why it works. The mild stress might ramp up the body's defenses, and it also seems to give you a better response to insulin, but it can also damage your cells. However, whether you fast or not, you'll always need to eat in the end, which is good, because I rather like food. Whether you've eaten solid or liquid food, it all goes down the same way. Click here to see where your poop goes. If you're enjoying all this, make sure you subscribe. I'm off for lunch.